Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are in week 11 and I am going to start discussing module 51. In the last uh, week, we have started talking about uh, the modern part of C++ covering C++ 11 primarily and there are several general features that we have covered which are listed here. Then Important general feature that we have discussed is the difference between copying and moving, particularly what is the difference between L value and R value and what is move semantics and how the move in C++ can take advantage of the move semantics to have better performance. We have seen std colon colon move function also in the standard library. We will continue on that in the current module. We will try to understand how R value reference works as a universal reference under template type deduction and the problem that arises due to forwarding of parameters known as uh, forwarding problem uh, that happens in the template type deduction. We try to learn how universal reference and uh, std colon colon forward function can work for perfect forwarding of parameters. We will understand the implementation of std colon colon forward and understand how move is an optimization of the copy, what is the solution that C++ 11 is actually giving us. So, this is the outline which will be available on the left. So, starting with uh, discussion on universal reference, let me quickly specifically recap a few key concepts that we did in the last module. One is of reference collapsing that is uh, we observed that uh, when we use the template uh, in terms of uh, C++, often we will have multiple references coming for a, for a particular type. So, in uh, C++ 03, the, there was one reference collapsing rule, so that you have a T reference and another reference, then this will be collapsed to a single reference. So, reference to reference does not make a sense, it is reference to the original. So, this is what uh, is not only the in, in this kind of a template, when we try to do an invocation and binding using uh, this uh, function f then t becomes int ampersand and therefore, we have in total we have the function having a type t ampersand ampersand which is collapsed to the t ampersand. In C++ 11 we have r value references. So, there are four possibilities, four possible combinations and we learned the collapsing rule that uh, reference collapsing involving any L value reference will always collapse to L value reference and reference collapsing when it involves only R value reference, it will collapse to R value reference. So, this is the only rule where R value and R value will collapse to R value, otherwise it will always be L value. So, we need to keep this in mind and this will be uh, typically used here. Now, if we look at uh, the T ampersand ampersand parameter deduction in uh, templates, particularly if I have an R value reference parameter in the template, then we know that uh, this is this will go through the template type deduction. And the in terms of template type deduction, what it does when it actually a parameter is passed, whether to this uh, template uh, f, uh, this definition of the template f. If I pass, uh, if I call it with f x, where x is an L value, then actually an L value will be passed. So, this is a L value reference and you have 
the r value reference. So, due to collapsing this will become an l value reference. The same thing will happen if I pass an r value reference. So, I will have an r value reference and that will collapse to r value reference only. Similar thing this is for uh, plain old data type the same thing will happen for the user defined type. So, we get a very specific uh, feature that uh, if the template parameter is an r value reference, then when l value is passed to that uh, in place of that parameter, then it will become an l value reference. If an r value is passed to that parameter, then it will become a non reference or a r value reference. Right? So, this is a very you know nice uh, property of the r value reference template parameter, which is kind of referred to often as a magical reference type. So, that for r value arguments uh, it binds with uh, r values for l value arguments it binds with l values. So, what we get if we summarize that if I have a plain function with r value reference, then the calls to this function will bind only with r value references that is non constant r values. Right? Whereas, if we have a universal reference, what is universal reference? If we have the r value reference in the context of a template parameter, then because of this property of reference collapsing, if a I pass an l value for this template then it will behave like an l value reference. If I pass an r value then it will behave like an r value reference. So, it is kind of takes two different contexts. So, and that is the reason this is called a universal reference that is it is adapting itself to the type of argument uh, uh, whether it is an l value argument or it is an r value argument according to that the binding will become appropriately different. In this connection we also note that uh, the auto feature that we had studied earlier that auto we mentioned that uh, it follows the type deduction which is of templates type deduction. So, if I have auto ampersand ampersand that is auto of r value reference type then those are also those will also behave like the universal reference. So, here we have a l value generator a function call which will give a value and here we have a variable which is an l value. So, if I initialize the auto variable v 1 with calc val which is an r value. Right? So, the type deduced by the auto ampersand ampersand going by the template type deduction will be int ampersand ampersand that is it will deduce a r value reference type. Whereas, if I initialize it with a l value then it will deduce a l value reference due to reference collapsing because auto follows the type deduction of the templates. So, auto ampersand ampersand also behaves like the universal reference. But if we try to do something equivalent using say decal type, we have seen decal type I can take decal type of each of these and uh, then I in style of the auto if I try to put uh, 2 ampersand it will not behave like a universal reference because decal type as you know always extracts the actual type devoid of the references. It gets the actual type. So, whether it is an l value parameter or it is an uh, whether it is an r value parameter or it is an l value parameter the type deduced by decal type will be just the int. Therefore, if I use 2 ampersand after this it will both become r value reference it will not behave like a universal reference. So, this is the key behavior that is important to understand for the universal references. Universal and R value references are uh, can be compared very easily both use the same ampersand ampersand syntax and it works as an R value reference if it occurs after 
a plain old data type or a user defined type for our value reference. But for a variable type t in a template ampersand ampersand will work as a universal reference and there r values will bind with, with r value reference will bind with r values and l value and universal reference will bind with l values and r values. So, this is for just a plain de definition and this is for a template type definition right. So, if I write int ampersand ampersand in a function then this will bind as a r value reference, but when I write t ampersand ampersand in a template situation and then the template is invoked then it will behave like a universal reference. Some more examples are given here from the standard uh, library like uh, vector if you do pushback ampersand that is how it is uh, defined. So, this is a L value reference there is a overload which is an R value reference whereas, uh, m plus back is a universal reference because it is templatized. Okay. So, let us uh, with this uh, knowledge uh, let us move on to the next big problem that R value reference solves. The first problem that it solved is that of move semantics and we have learnt about it pretty well. The next problem as it is known is called the perfect forwarding problem. The perfect forwarding problem is uh, arises when in a template function I want to call another function and pass the parameters. I have a template function and I want to call another function from that template function passing the parameters that the template function has received. So, this is what is called the parameter forwarding. So, you receive parameters and you are forwarding it to another function. Now, when you do this forwarding process what you want is that the L value arguments should be should work as copies and R value arguments should work as move. This property should remain so that the move semantics that we have created so with so much of care can be carried forward to all kinds of function calls. So, let us see how what does that mean. So, to illustrate that we have one template function right here which has two type parameter t 1 t 2 both of them are given universal references that is the you know this is written as uh, r value reference. So, in the template uh, type deduction context this will become universal reference. So, this function f wants to call a function g and a function h to g it passes parameter p 1 to h it passes parameter p 2 right this is what it wants to do. Now, for g and h we have written two overloads for g we have written one overload which takes const int ampersand which means it takes an L value parameter and it has another overload where it takes a R value parameter right. So, we want to check that when I forward this call from f to g using parameter p 1 which of these functions should get called right. This is what is done for a plain old data type. Uh, built in type int. Similarly, I have defined another arbitrary class data and I have defined similar functions with L one with L value parameter and another with R value parameter for this user defined type data and I call this H. This is just to show that the behavior is same for the built in type as well as for the user defined type in terms of F g is passed the parameter p 2 right. This is the scenario. Now, let us see if I try to uh, create two uh, variables i of int and d of data d has a default uh, constructor. So, that is what we will get uh, generated we are not really bothered about what 
the values are we are more bothered about the actual binding of the functions. So, if I do f i d that means, that I am passing L value parameter as p 1 as well as L value parameter as p 2 because both an i and d are L values. I am passing L value arguments to both of them. So, I expect that p 1 and p 2 both will be received as L values and will be passed on as L values. So, if it is passed on as L values then naturally for g this will get should get called for h this should get called. So, you can see the respective you know statements uh, given here to understand which function has been called and I correctly find that those functions have been called. But now say suppose I keep the L value for the second parameter, but the first parameter I change to R value and I could have done it by you know uh, having a function which returns integer also, but I have used that simple technique that we have learnt is you can take any L value and call std move on that which converts strips of the L value reference and gives it the R value reference. So, this becomes an R value. So, this is an R value I am passing and this is an L value I am passing. So, P 1 is L value R value P 2 is L value. So, I would have expected that while for h it is an L value. So, this function should get called this function should get called, but for g this is a r value. So, I would have expected that for g this function should have been called, but no this function does not get called g also binds with the L value version of the function and you can continue this combination see if both for I mean if you have uh, r value reference in terms of the function h that is the function using the udt parameter even then you get the similar result if both are r values then also you get the similar result. In short what you find that irrespective of whether the parameter is actually an L value or an R value in spite of the universal reference it is passed always as an L value right. So, the forwarding is not correct the forwarding is not happening in the proper way the L value R value ness of the parameter is getting lost why is this happening very simple the reason it happens is when I get the parameter p 1 or p 2 here p 1 is a name. So, it is a named parameter. So, when I pass p 1 here irrespective of the fact that I had got p 1 possibly as an L value, but the fact that it has a name the compiler deduces that p 1 is an L value it forgets that it was an R value. So, it does not matter whether p 1 was received as an L value or an R value the sheer fact that it has a name will make it a L value and therefore, the L value part will happen. So, that is why this solution of forwarding gets broken. It is like in the move semantics it is very easy to fix that and for that in the utility again you get another function which is known as std colon colon forward and you specify the type you want. What it does is it checks from the t 1 by the template deduction it checks what is the reference type is it L value reference or an R value reference and accordingly from this pure L value it either maintains the L value reference if it is received as an L value but it makes it the R value reference if it is received as an R value. So, std forward actually is a pair of functions which converts an L value to an R value if required or keeps an R value as an R value. Right? So, with that when we try we see that the first case has no difference, but in the second case where the first parameter is an R value we see that actually the R value version of the function g is getting called. Similarly, say if you take the last one both of them are R values and in both cases 
the r value version r value reference version of the functions are getting called right so by using std colon colon forward we are able to preserve the r value l value ness under the template type deduction and forward perfectly that is the reason this is called a perfect forwarding solution or perfect forwarding to say so you can in in summary you can get exactly the behavior that you had wanted so that is the basic solution of the l uh, i mean forwarding problem like in move semantics uh, we could achieve the move semantics with the help of function std colon colon move here we can get perfect forwarding by std colon colon forward right? very simple solution now this uh, uh, this entire process is very type safe in the sense that uh, when it does the forwarding it not only forwards to the corresponding type but it does the same if for any type that is convertible to the given type so if i have a type h that that we have and if we have any type u which is derived from h we know that an object of type u can be passed in place of a parameter of type t in terms of reference and the same thing is allowed here so if i define a derived data by specializing data then and we use the object of the derived data and pass it exactly the same way either by r value reference or by by l value reference the entire code will work exactly as fine but in the contrary if i have some other class which is not related to which is not a specialization of data then try to do this uh, parameter take make an object and try to pass it as a parameter it will fail as it is expected to fail because it cannot bind to a unrelated class so that tells us that uh, this uh, mechanism of uh, universal reference along with the std colon colon forward is not only solving the perfect forwarding problem but it is fully type safe solution right now in fact you can you can uh, also make sure that if you want that uh, compatible types will not be forwarded even that can be done at a compile time using a specific uh, uh, feature called static assert i will talk about it in one of the later modules where you can specify this is a don't try to understand the details of uh, this entire thing will come to that when we do static assert but the basic thing is you are trying to say that uh, the type of t1 what is the type that you will allow so i am if i say that for type of t2 here i will allow only data then when i try to pass a reference to a derived object in l value or r value then this code will not compile rather i will get a compilation error message that t2 must be of data so in this way you can also statically control what you want whether you want the compatibility to extend or how much you want the compatibility to extend and so on okay so in the in the following i have given a number of examples based on perfect forwarding this one the first one is uh, based on a little variant of the the earlier example where instead of uh, using std colon colon move to generate uh, your uh, um, uh, r values we have directly used constants or direct temporary objects here and you can see the how the code similarly behaves i have given some functionality in the class d also i would want you to read and run this and see that you actually get these uh, outputs first is without std colon colon forward in which case everything will be forwarded as l value and in the second case with std colon colon forward where appropriate uh, l value or r value forwarding will happen there are uh, two other examples uh, please go through them one is a generic factory method here what i want is i want to write a factory kind of function which takes say create object function which takes a type and uh, and a value and gives me an object of that type so it's kind of a as if it's in the, in the in the factory and these all should be generic in nature 
and in the next uh, couple of slides uh, slowly this uh, whole code has been developed and I do not want to go through it in the presentation. I would want you to run and study and understand this. So, this was uh, this is example 2 which spans over 4 versions and finally, gives you a complete uh, solution to see how perfect forwarding can be effectively used in terms of achieving uh, you know really powerful uh, compact generic code. The next example is about uh, applying uh, we call it apply functor which takes a function and its arguments and applies the function on the arguments properly distinguishing the L values and the R values. Again the solution is uh, developed in uh, two steps. First you just take the NAVE solution and it will not work because everything will be forwarded as L value when the apply tries to take the function and pass the argument to it. But if you uh, when you use std colon colon forward on the parameter you will be able to forward it in the proper way. So, please go through and prepare on this. The complete solution is finally given in this slide 24. Moving forward, uh, what is this std colon colon forward? It's a, it's a simple uh, function in the utility component of the standard template library, which uh, um, uh, which has this uh, property that if it gets a L value reference, then it will give you an L value reference. If it gets an R value reference, it will give you an R value. Right? So that is what we wanted. The implementation is pretty straightforward. It is templatized by the type. So, for L values you will get T would be T ampersand for R values T will be simple T. And in both cases we want a universal reference to be returned because then under template deduction it will be R value or L value appropriately. What you do is something very, very simple. You just uh, do the remove reference which we had done earlier take the type of that and make an L value, do the same thing make it an R value. Right? So, you can see that the forward has two overload one for an L value parameter L value reference type one for R value reference type. So, depending on the reference type it has actually got which through template deduction you know you will be able to choose the right one and then you cast it always to the universal reference and return that. So, with this your std colon colon forward also is a very simple code which will work always. Now, before I close uh, a couple of uh, comments about uh, uh, finally, move as an optimization of copy it is not something which is different, but uh, so uh, the, the task of move can be taken up by a copy when it is not possible to move. Right, that is that is the essence of the whole thing. So, if my resource class has only copy constructor and no move support, then even though I might ask the resource in the copy constructor of the class, we you would remember these classes we had discussed uh, earlier in, in module uh, 50. So, I am trying to do std move and trying to move that, but since there is no move constructor this will also use the copy constructor. Right? It will that r value will automatically be converted to the l value and will be passed to the copy constructor of move my resource. Whereas, if I have the move support added that is if I have given a move constructor the similar passing the r value reference r value type will give me actually a binding to the move constructor of the my resource uh, class. Right? So, it is very flexible that it is not something different that you need to do. You are doing the same your intention is to move in both cases, but depending on the support given by the target class if it has move it will move if it does not have move it will seamlessly without bothering you fall back to the copy version. So, that that way it makes it always sensible that you write the move versions as and when it is possible or as and when 
you feel that uh, well move is uh, will be beneficial than copying right so you provide that support and in terms of using the other classes it will translate seamlessly because you will be able to take that uh, uh, work with move if the move support is there if it is not there it will seamlessly fall back on the copy support right so this is uh, this is the basic uh, principle of design that it should be uh, of course note that there are some uh, uh, classes you know, where the copy operation have uh, you know forcibly been blocked so that they are they are they are called move only types where you can only move you cannot copy an object they are only movable not copyable we will talk about these kind of uh, classes and objects at a later point of time but in general the types uh, should support move when it is cheaper than copy that's the general principle that we learn from uh, this support and uh, just to realize that uh, we have always been talking about uh, move benefits in case of move constructor move assignment operator but move in place of copy is not limited to these two functions you can any function can have a move version if it is meaningful for example here i'm i'm trying to uh, i have a cl class my list which has a list id and a vector of values integer values given so i have a setter function a function to set an id given an id it will set an id it ha i have a value setter also given a vector of values it will set that vector so these codes are are trivial but what it what these codes will do we we have known always that these codes will copy either this id string or this vector of values and so on but we can also if we want we can also write move versions of that by simply changing the parameter of this function to a r value reference non constant r value reference so you just overload that function and instead of copying here you write a move so what will happen if your set id is being set with an r value then that r value will not have to be copied which it would in case these were not there right so this is what makes can make any function which needs to move around uh, data more efficient to work with the copy now naturally uh, compilers like compilers give you support in terms of constructors destructors copy constructors etc that you have missed out that you have not written uh move constructor and move assignment operators are also special in that way that compiler generates the move operations if you have not provided but you are asking for it right but there are certain conditions under which the this will be done one is all data members of the class must be movable only then the compiler will generate otherwise if you write it will be there otherwise it will not be there the second condition is there should not be any user declared copy or move operation if similar rule applies for copy uh, free copy functions also that if you define a copy constructor then no free copy constructor will be provided but here no matter if you have any move operation defined or any copy operation defined then this free move functions will not be available similarly if you have a user declared destructor the move operation will not be made freely available you will have to write it if you need them right so these are are some of the rules of uh, compiler uh, generated uh, version so here, here i have just shown some examples that if you have a, a destructor that is if you are doing a custom deletion then you have to decide what kind of copying you will do because the free move will not be available unfortunately free copy is available which is a bad thing we will talk about that on a at a later point similarly if you are doing custom moving then you have to do custom copying also because you have if you have provided for say these are this is a class uh, widget 1 which has two parameters which are copyable and movable so 
you just have provided a constructor, no copy construction operation, no copy operations, no move operations, compiler will give you both uh, move and copy operations in terms of construction and assignment. But if you add in this widget 2, if you add a user declared copy constructor, then no implicit move operation will be provided, though implicit copy assignment operator will be provided. Right? So, the custom move, if you have custom move semantics, then you must have custom copy semantics, that is that is what all it all uh, relates to and that is. Uh, so, so default is you try to define the move semantics in every case, make advantage of compiler generated move constructor and assignment operator whenever it is possible, but uh, make keep this in mind that whenever possible moving is cheaper than doing copies and that can give you great optimization in terms of your code. So, in summary we have learnt how R value references work as universal reference and how to solve the perfect forwarding problem and what is the way to design with move as an optimization of the copy. Thank you very much for your attention, we will meet in the next module.